Welcome back. Today we have the, the pleasure of Jim Gray, Secretary of Transportation for the whole state of Kentucky, former mayor of Lexington. Um, he's somebody I've looked up to for a long time. I, I think about his words, if we'll get into it later, but build a great American city very, very, very often. Um, so welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Jim. Hey, Ross. Great to be with you all. Thank you for the invitation to join. It is our pleasure. Um, so for the folks that don't know you, give us a rundown of how you got to Lexington, um, who you are and what, what, what you get to do. Hey, well, thanks. Um, we were talking earlier before we sat down at um, Lexington growing up in, when I was growing up in Glasgow in Southern Kentucky, a town of, wonderful town of about 10,000 folks. Um, I've looked at Lexington we looked at Lexington and our family as a shining city on the hill. You know, it was the, the place to go if you were going to ball games, if you were going to maybe visit the university or some of the things going on. We also looked at Louisville the same way because it was about it was a little bit shorter to get to Louisville and equal distance to get to Nashville and Louisville. And then it was about a 30-minute longer drive to get to Lexington, but it was always worth it. And... Um, I was sharing with you earlier, Ross, that I spent a year at UK Law School. And um, when I first came to Lexington, I always remember that um, driving out Old Frankfurt Pike and seeing the um, and and seeing the stone walls, the um, dry laid stone walls. I, I'd never been across the seas. I'd never been to England, but I'd seen pictures. And I thought, you know, this looks like the pictures that you see in the English countryside. And um, sure enough, once I got there, it's like, this looks like Lexington. So, you know, very inspiring to be able to look at a, you know, look up to a place in a sense. And also appreciate, you know, growing up in Glasgow for me was a real, still is today, a real touchstone. We've got family there. And... Um, family there today uh, and still my family goes back uh, routinely in fact we just had a uh, we just had a celebration of the of a cemetery restoration of in Cumberland County which is which is uh, east of Glasgow and Barron County and Cumberland County was where my father grew up and we had a restoration a ceremony to commemorate the where the family had gotten together over weekends for the last couple of years and restored this family cemetery that had grown up hardly distinguishable in a place called Gray's Gap in Cumberland County. And uh, it was the first gravestone there was in the 1830s. So it was, it was fun, always rewarding and inspiring, you know, to go back to your roots. Grays have a long lineage. I was going to say long time Kentucky family, I'd say. Actually, the yeah, different branches go back to the late 1700s. Uh, my mother's side of the family in, in Barron County and my grandfather's side of the family in Medcalf County and go back to the late 1700s. So it was, yeah, that must have been a time. That's cool. So now today, when you introduce yourself, what, what, what's your go-to? Do you say, oh, yeah. I, I say, uh, somebody say, you prefer to be called mayor or, or secretary? I say, I prefer to be called Jim. So <laughs> it's easy. You know, it's very easy. And uh, it has been a really rewarding experience, though, being secretary of transportation, of course, being mayor. I'll come back to that perhaps in a minute. And the lessons learned from growing up in a family business in um, working for Governor Bashir has been extra, extraordinarily rewarding. And there are a lot of things that I say routinely that when I first interviewed with him, he, we talked about roads and bridges and his priority projects. And this was right after he was elected governor. And, um, and I routinely will say today that what he didn't talk about was that last bullet point on the job description that says other duties as assigned. And that's really, those other duties as assigned have been what's made the job very rewarding 
in addition to the routine work, the regular eight to five work of building roads and highways and bridges and improving the lives of Kentuckians, as the governor routinely says. Uh, but those other duties as assigned have, in, have included during COVID, he asked me to help Dr. Stack with the vaccine distribution. And that was a, a remarkable time. We would have daily Zoom calls with the team up to 50 people, not once but twice a day in the morning and at night. And we're challenged with standing up more than a thousand sites in a very short period of time to for the vaccine. And then not that much later, we had the tornadoes in Western Kentucky. And then not long after that, the floods in Eastern Kentucky and those projects. And the reason I bring those up is they really did cause me to lean on project management background and experience, you know, and, and, uh, unforeseen conditions, unpredictable conditions. And to recognize that you really depend on a lot of talented people. Now, there are 4,400 people in the transportation cabinet. 3,400 of those 4,400 are in the Department of, Tran of Highways. And that's the one, those folks are the ones, the frontline workers. And every county in the state, every county in the state has a maintenance facility. Used to call them the, <clears throat> the, the highway barns. Maintenance facilities is what we call mm -hmm. them today. And this is where our frontline employees in the Department of Highways are located in every county. Now, when you've got a disaster and a tragedy, uh, like a natural disaster like we had with the, with the tornadoes and with the floods, who are the first of the first responders? They're often the Department of Highway employees. And why is that? Well, you got to clear the roads of debris, fallen trees, whatever debris may be, may have occurred in the floods, you know, just enormous, enormous devastation. And so our roads were often covered. Well, before your first responders could get often to victims, the roads off, you know, had to be cleared. And that's why I give praise and tribute to these frontline employees of the transportation cabinet and the highways department because they're out there often the dark of night uh, getting the getting the roads cleared and very grateful and very thankful i always want to praise them craftsman contractors is central kentucky's one-stop shop for roofing windows siding and gutters craftsmancontractors.com slash contact us will get you straight to the form you need so that their team will get in touch about your project or just text Stephen at 859-246-0108 when they finish your project of windows, siding, gutters, or roofing you'll see what they mean when they say we build with integrity it's, it's really neat to watch the snow plow crews that are just going constantly or the <laughs> Um, I forgot to mention the other duties as assigned, including snow and ice. You removal. get to drive one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get anybody in a dangerous situation. Okay, deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, so other duties assigned, what, what does a day in the life of the secretary look like when you are doing the normal, if, well, the if normal, there are such things, know, we, we're working routinely. Of course, the, the governor will have routine meetings with him. I will have every two weeks we have a meeting with the governor, for example, specifically on the high ground communities that are being built in after the floods in eastern Kentucky, where an interdisciplinary team of project managers are working on these communities, the rebuild of these high ground communities, uh, often on reclaimed uh nine sites so we're meeting with the governor he's holding us accountable he will remember things that i've forgotten and remind me of it and i'm thinking how in the world is he remembering that and i didn't uh, but that is a real tribute to the skills that he brings to the table uh, and when i say that i'm not being flattering and i'm not being gratuitous or solicitous i'm being 
Frank. <laughs> The, the guy has an incredible capacity for uh, remembering and for good management and for staying on top of things. He keeps us on our toes. That's what I say routinely, that he keeps us on our toes. So this is, this is a, a leader who is all about putting a stake in the ground and saying, we're going to get something unusual and extraordinary done. That was a lot like how you led Lexington. It. Well, you know, we'll, I, I've, I can't say that. Uh, I I won't confirm or deny. <laughs> <laughs> I'll confirm but it. I do, the I, vision you know, is incredible. Well, well, it was. I think when you when I say you put a stake in the ground, I know when I was in the role of mayor, right out of the gate. Well, I'd been fortunate. I'll put it this way: I'd been fortunate to be on the city council for four years and be vice mayor. So I had seen some of the opportunities that felt like that I felt like we needed to claim. And uh, among those was, was the Town Branch Trail and Commons leading through the downtown on the, on the path of the original water source for the city, the Town Branch Creek. And what could we do with this? Well, it wasn't my idea. It was actually, it was the idea that emerged from others, including Van Meter Pettit, who for years had advocated for it. And I simply had the bully pulpit. So, you know, right out of the gate, knew we had challenges. In my first State of the City address, I said, let's put a stake in the ground. Let's do something about Rupp Arena, the aging Rupp Arena then, and the need for a new convention center, uh, the need for restoring an urban space. And let's do this town branch trail. through the city, you know, uh, adopt it. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're necessarily going to raise the river like they did in San Antonio or the river walk, but can we improve the condition that we have and can we reclaim this history? And that was the whole notion. You know, I often would, would, uh, use that saying that goes something like this, build it and they will come. We all know that one from field of dreams, uh, I would ad adapt it a little bit and say, build it first for our own people, then others will come. And that was the that was the real notion. That was the real concept was build it first for our own people, then others will come. And and um, actually pivotal to the whole that whole period and and the transformation that did occur in <clears throat> during that period in the urban very urban downtown space was the 21C Hotel. You know, here again, it was a de decaying older building in the core of our city, a building that was designed in 1912 by one of the nation's outstanding architects, McKim Mead and White, and it had fallen into decay and disrepair. And, you know, what can we do about it? Well, with Laura Lee, Laura Lee Brown and Steve Wilson and the 21C brand willing to take it over after I pleaded with them for years, y'all, please consider Lexington after Louisville. And, um, and they did, but that really was a tipping point. That project was a tipping point. It led to the momentum for the Town Branch Commons. That project led to the, to the opportunity to really get more leverage and momentum on the uh, renovations to Rupp Arena and the expansion of the convention center. And then ultimately to the to restoring the old courthouse, which some, even on the city council, wanted to plow down, wanted to, wanted to demolish and, and, uh, and make a park out of it, which I, I thought, well, we just can't let that happen. SVN Stone Commercial Real Estate is a full-service commercial real estate firm located in Lexington, Kentucky. Affiliated with the SVN International Network, SVN has over 200 offices across the globe. The SVN Stone team consists of experienced commercial real estate advisors in the heart of the bluegrass. SVN helps their clients with commercial property sales, leasing, investments, and property management. Let SVN help you with your commercial real estate needs. Check us out at svnstone.com. Remind me, timeline of mayoral stint was in the range of 2011 to 2019 2011 january 2011 to january 2019 so day before you go into office you 
kind of have a probably a, a list of as being a citizen of Lexington, um, you know, and being uh, vice mayor and just having, you know, some things in your mind. What are a few of the challenges that you saw with the city of Lexington that you really wanted to address and, and maybe did address? Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be project based, but a, a few of the well, things yeah. of Lexington. Yeah, well, that's a great question. And um, I remember sitting in uh, or working out of our offices then at Gray Construction before, uh, during the transition. And I'd met with my remarkable chief of staff and who had been my campaign manager, Jamie Emmons. And um, we, were, we were working from a whiteboard and we said, you know, we got to, we got to put this stake in the ground. We've got to, we've got to claim some real touchstone values and goals. And, uh, and I remember thinking then and earlier that really Lexington was like a clean slate. You've got a really modestly sized downtown. We didn't expand like Louisville did in the late 19th century, mid 19th and century and early 20th century. We didn't expand our downtown core to include the that during that period industrial growth. So a lot of residential uh, residential areas had been removed in a city like Louisville or a city like Cleveland. You know these uh, industrial cities. Lexington was an agrarian community, so our downtown core was already always pretty small. So that made it very workable, and that's why when I say a clean slate, we had plenty of opportunities to do really creative things uh, if we res- if we provided that we would retain what was unique and original in terms of the character and the built environment of the built environment, the buildings that really represented the character of the city from that period. And if we, whatever we built new, we built in a remarkable way with great design. And uh, I often would quote Joe Riley, Ross, we were talking about Joe Riley, the longtime mayor of Charleston, South Carolina, who would say, whatever you do, create what is beautiful in the city. So he was basically saying, really focus on your built environment. And I, you know, that for me was a touchstone. And then we, so we had this whiteboard in the office. We said, okay, we got to reduce this to some very crisp and um, concepts, goals that are easy to fall off the tongue. And so we reduced it to three goals. And at that time, we were coming out of a recession. So the first was create jobs, meaningful jobs, which give purpose and meaning in life. So create jobs. Second, run government efficiently. And third, build a great American city. So it was easy, rolls off the tongue very fluently. I could remember it easily. <laughs> And I could quote it routinely. And, you know, that was that became then the touchstone. And again, you know, that goes back to I would say that and I said government's not run just like a business, but you can take good business principles and practices and translate them into government. And that's what I felt we were, like we were able to do. And when you do run government efficiently and responsibly, then the public's going to trust whatever aspirational goals or ambitious goals you may try to achieve. And I've, too, I've always believed that um, if the public really, really, really believes in something, and when I say the public, I mean that can be groups. That can be groups of aspirational thinkers. You know, they get together and they really believe in something, like a parks program, for example. If the public really, really believes in something, they really, really, really work hard to get it done, then public officials will jump all over themselves to help get it done. But that inspiration from, in a sense, ground up, groundswell, is always valuable and important. That, you know, bringing consensus to good ideas. So when you think about the city on the hill now, or a vision for a, a city. I think a lot of people 
they, they don't think about American cities. Um, what is that great American city if you could build something today? You got to start with the fundamentals. And sometimes the fundamentals are, you know, not at all sexy, but they're very important day to day. You know, people want to live in a safe city. And so you've got to have that as your fundamental touchstone. You know, create a safe city. Ensure that you're always focusing on on that. And from that, then you go to creating a great public spaces, for example. I mean, I've always believed it's, it's about quality of life and about quality of place. So you got to focus on, it's so important to focus on quality of life, which is translates into that safe environment and then quality of place. And the quality of place means, you know, you've got families that are growing and they want things to do. And you want in a city, you want to make sure that you're doing the, you're creating the kinds of opportunities where people want to participate. I love that. Uh, Ross is a, is a city, uh, junkie loves, loves visiting cities that are cool and have really neat attributes about them. Lexington to me, I'm a lifetime Lexingtonian. Um, hard for a fish to describe water. Yes. (laughs) But, um, luckily I've been able to, for work, travel to a few different cities. It is so interesting though the attributes that people deem that Lexington has. I love what you said about like the English countryside. I'm going to London in a few weeks and I'm, I'm excited to experience something London in Scotland. Um, I'm excited to experience something similar to that. But part of me is like, man, that is the natural beauty of Lexington. We have a very similar quality. Um, something that we talked about um, off air beforehand was the importance of a downtown Um, and I think our downtown has a lot of really neat projects going on right now. What are a few of the, what are a few of the projects that you just get really excited about downtown and where do you think we can continue to go with kind of our urban core of Lexington? Let me taxi back uh, because you, you, what you said was really resonant, resonated with me. I had the opportunity in our business at great construction, the family business coming out of Glasgow. I had the opportunity when I was really young after my father passed away um, soon after we began building for Japanese companies in America, in the U S in a very, very small and modest way, first in Tennessee, then in Kentucky. And I had the chance to travel to Japan, which was just eye opening for me. You know, it was just incredible to be able to go to Tokyo in 1985, you know, before Toyota landed here. Uh, then we had the opportunity to work on the Toyota project and other suppliers, but I got to travel back and forth to Japan, to Tokyo, to Nagoya, to Kyoto. You know, so these were Kyoto's a city, of course, the first imperial capital of Japan, and it, it you know, for centuries, and yeah, you know, and there, 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 and in that culture, they're so precise and so careful about planning because they have such a large population and such limited land space. And so you learn from that. I also had the benefit and opportunity to travel to other cities in America through our work. And so, yeah, I would think, oh, wow, you know, Chicago got Millennium Park now. And what do we have that's similar in our urban, really our downtown, our core? Well, that was when the ta- the idea of tra- taking a empty parking lot that, speaking of Joe Riley, he used to say <clears throat> that a surface parking lot is evil to a city. So what do we have? We had 800 cars parked for decades behind Rupp Arena and on the high street parking lot. Now, you know, as part of the Rupp Arena Arts and Entertainment District, we said, you know, again, stake in the ground. Let's create developable, a develop a developed proper, property here instead of just a surface parking lot. And 
on the the uh, the lower area behind Rupp Arena, the Cox Street parking lot, 800 parking spaces, asphalt. Well, that's where the town branch actually surfaces. And said, so, well, you know, this is where we can put a park, perhaps. And lo and behold, you know, 15 years later, we got a park that's being built and it's going to come online next year. So it takes a while for these imaginations, <laughs> for these visions to materialize. And the toughest part of it is not the construction. I used to think construction was the toughest part of a project. No way. The toughest part of a project is bringing consensus, you know, bringing people together and then creating the, a plan that people can get their arms around and believe in. And then, you know, the largest privately funded project in the city's history is the town branch park. It's coming to fruition now. And now there've been larger projects at the university of Kentucky, but this is the largest publicly largest public project, public, I'm sorry, privately funded project in the public interest in the city's history. All right. So all that is to say that, you know, a lot of, a lot of the things that are, that are coming together took years to imagine and plan and bring consensus to. And that's likewise for anything that's being considered today. Fun for greater Lexington is young, you know, a lot of young people in the city or number and, and they've, uh, have, uh, again, stake in the ground. We've got some aspirational goals here. Uh, perhaps an art museum, a performing arts center, a new park, and parks, plural. Uh, well, it may take a while, but they're bringing, bringing people together with a vision and a plan, and things can then happen. Develop Lex is also sponsored by Community Trust Bank. Hi there, this is Cam Dacey, commercial loan officer at Community Trust Bank and avid Develop Lex and Middle Tech podcast listener. Community Trust offers a wide variety of home loans, commercial loans, and small business loans to suit your financial needs, as well as mobile banking, internet banking, and bill pay. Their friendly and professional staff would love to assist you at one of their six Lexington locations. Community Trust Bank is committed to building communities built on trust. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, subject to credit approval. I think that's such a cool thing that one of the gifts that you shared with the city was your vision. And it's neat to, to see that go from a vision and imagination kind of thing that that's, that's a hard thing too. Not everybody has that. Um, into figuring out finance, figuring out operations, fi figuring out construction and everything they're forward. But how, how well, is it in, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I've always been awkward about that V word. Um, I, I will say that <laughs> what I think I've been fairly good at is seeing what others have done. Like Weston, like we were just talking about in other cities, you know, what, what's been done, what's been achieved. And, then appropriating that idea, stealing it, and saying, "Ah, we could do that. Let's do it." And um, so, well, I'll I'll shirk away from the V word from the vision. I will say that I've been fairly responsible at stealing others' good ideas. Perhaps that's a that so that's a cool concept though. If if you think of so many of the ideas um that it's not just city planning but even like retail concepts or or attractions or whatever most of the time they are stolen from somebody that had a really really good idea yeah. but actually being able to shift the public consensus that we need that that is a skill set for sure without a doubt well, yeah, well I, I i have been fortunate and blessed with having this experience of building and a family business of uh, going through the edge of bankruptcy and insolvency and coming back and then learning what it learning the principles of, of good business and in our particular business project management you know 
every project that every good project does have a vision. It does have clear goals. It has a commonly a common purpose, um, good plans. Think about it. I mean, if you're building a bridge or you're building a building, you got to have good plans. Okay. It's same is true with the city or with any organization, with any social system, you got to have a good plan and then implement that plan. And it, it sounds simple, you know, but it sounds simple, <laughs> but the things like that are, you're right. They're, they're not simple. It is, it is, uh, difficult to make things. It's difficult to make things simple and you got to really work hard to make it, make it simple. So some things you're making simple right now are the I-75 expansions. Yes. <laughs> um, new circle roads widening. Yes. And I think a lot of people in Lexington forget that there are Lexington streets, but there's a lot of state streets. Think oh. Nicholasville Road. Think Absolutely. Uh, heck, right. prob probably all of the, the main name roads are, are well, state one of the things maintained. That, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about the, the highway projects, of course. The seven... Uh, Interstate 75, um, the widening project there, Newtown Pike, um, Leestown Road, the Double Diamond. Don't want to forget uh, bicycle and pedestrian interests. This is something that we've really focused on since Governor Bashir became governor and in the transportation cabinet is bicycling and walking just left the bike walk summit here in Lexington for the whole state. I was just there this morning and, and, and spoke. And it's so wonderful to see the enthusiasm. And this is not just in the big cities like Lexington and Louisville and Owensboro or Bowling Green, the larger cities. Um, this is in small communities across this, across the whole state. Um, I always cite, the conversations that I had and have had with Susie Rasmus, who's the mayor of Corbin, who's Jim, we've got to have more pedestrian and bicycling opportunities. We got to be, we've got it. We want to attract people the same way that Lexington does. And okay. Yeah, you're right, Susie. So it's, while it's about the transportation cabinet is about highways. And it's a big part of our composition, a big part of our, our mission. It's also about other modes of transportation and where we're very focused. You know. So, yeah, we've got 130,000 vehicles a day that are, address, that are addressing the I-75 corridor in and around Lexington. So the widening from Newtown to Paris Pike and then the Paris Pike to the uh, the southern the the uh, the southern intersection. That's a ninety mil, almost a hundred million dollar project, and so we're very focused on that because we've got so much volume of traffic going th through you know and utilizing this sector. Likewise, Newtown Pike, that project um, underway already in terms of right of way acquisition planning design and the same we've already actually started the double diamond on Leestown that will be very similar to the double diamond uh, on Harrodsburg Road which at the beginning people were just like no way what does this mean this is crazy I remember my good friend the late Al Smith said Jim what have you done to me he lived in Bo <laughs> he lived in Beaumont and he was in his, he was still driving in his eighties. And he's like, what have you done to me? I said, Al, you'll get used to it. Promise. I promise you. And sure enough, he came back later and he said, yeah, I have. And that's so much easier now to navigate. <laughs> Same thing's going to be true with Leestown road. Going to be easier to navigate for folks. That's what I also find funny about the, uh, just as a, an aside, the roundabouts, you know, I'm a, big fan of roundabouts, uh, roundabouts, the, again, West, you know, going through the English countryside all over, you know, and well, what is it? A, a roundabout is so efficient and so safe because it discourages or 
it prevents uh, T-bones, the tragic accidents that occur in T-boning at intersections, at signalized intersections. So we've got more that are coming on stream, even in Kentucky, but I always cite Carmel, Indiana, where there's 180 roundabouts in that town, in that, in that, in that city outside of Indianapolis. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's funny. When I think of transportation, um, there's a lot of outside of just like improving roads and filling cracks. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, attributes to the job. That's for sure. <laughs> a lot of activities. Yeah, a, a lot, lot of the things like the governor didn't put on that job description for me. <laughs> you should see my brain. If there was like an illustration of where my brain was going as you were describing all the responsibilities of that department um there's a lot there's a lot lot. i am really fortunate because there's just such great talent in that department in the cabinet incredible talent i mean they lift me up every day and um you know at the very top you know i'm fortunate to have a, a former secretary who is today deputy secretary his name is mike hancock and mike is a celebrated guy within the entire within the entire profession across the country and he was willing to join the Bashir administration and serve in it um, as deputy secretary and he's just great incredible at operations and it and at vision so that's an example James Ballinger who is our state highway engineer who actually leads the department of highways which is 3400 employees out of our 4400 James was at one time the chief district engineer right here in Lexington for the uh, district <clears throat> district seven. And that's when I got to know him when I was mayor. Great guy. I was able to recruit him a- into the number one job with the, it, with the highway department, Jamie Emmons, who was my chief of staff when I was mayor is the chief of staff today for the cabinet. And again, you know, just a great, now those are the ones that I, I uh, signal out only to illustrate so many others that are professionals in this cabinet. And this is one of the things that I routinely will say, you know, people in the private sector and people often, you know, in, in outside of just people in the private sector and citizens will disparage, frankly, government employees and get a bad rap they get a real bad rap an undeserved rap these are some of the most talented people that i have ever ever worked with in government wt young the late bill young for whom the of course the uk library is named and he was philanthropist legendary philanthropist and businessman wit very wise and a visionary he told me that years ago he said jim some of the brightest people that i've ever met are in government he had a short stint working for um, john y brown as cabinet secretary executive cabinet secretary and bill told me later after he had recruited (laughs) some former government employees into his business he said That's what he, and he said, these are some of the most talented people that I've ever run across. And what you have to remember is they're committed. They're committed to public service. There's a special DNA associated with that. And that commitment is to the benefit of the citizens. I try to say this routinely. I try to say as much as I can, as often as I can, because that perception needs to be erased and the perception of extraordinary service needs to be amplified. Well, thank you for your extraordinary service. Um, we appreciate everything you've done to shape Lexington into a place that Wes and I have got to grow up in and, and see, and people flock here for um, what you've done to create it for the citizens and other people have come to find later. Um, thanks for doing that for the state. Well, hey, you've been very generous with y'all's time. Uh, guys and thank you very much yeah you've got a, you've got a great material to work with when you've got a city like Lexington that's the that's the the value proposition that you bring to the table thank you guys 